are you still doing voiceover work or you don't do that anymore? I do a little bit. I do uh, here and there, but as you know, as you well know, um, the uh, landscape of the voiceover world has changed so vastly. Uh, 90 something percent of it now is non-union. Um, uh, so I do very, very little. I only do stuff where uh, my quasi celebrity means something because otherwise I'm competing in too large a pool. It's not worth it for me. Yeah, I don't hear any of the uh, uh, quote old timers unquote anymore. Uh, I don't recognize any of the voices. Yeah, I, I don't either very often. I mean, I, I, and guys that I, guys who I thought were the absolute best uh, in the world, Harry Chase and uh, Norman Rose and uh, guys like that, Norman Rose is long gone, but uh, there's just no room for them, for them anymore. It's a, it's a totally different world. What, 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 how do you think, well, in a world, uh, Fred, in the, <laughs> as, it, as it were, and, and that was probably like the last, blast or the last gasp that movie of of those days i think could you talk about that movie because you really you sort of represented that whole voice of god generation in that movie in a way could you talk about the movie how it happened sure um that movie was a, a great pleasure for me to make um i was living in new york just before i moved out to california i was living out in long island in montauk and my agent called me and he said, do you know who uh, uh, Lake Bell is? I said, well, I'm familiar with the name, but I, don't, I can't really place her. He said, well, look her up. You've probably seen her and stuff. So I looked her up. He said, she left a script for you here with a note. So he said, when you come into the city, uh, pick up the script and read this letter that she left. So I did. I went to the city, got the script, was very impressed with the caliber of the writing of the script. And she wrote me this lovely handwritten note saying, you know, I don't know if you know who I am. My name is Lake Bell. Uh, I wrote this script uh, a couple of years ago and I finally raised the money to do it uh, and thought of a lot of other guys for this part, none of whom uh, I think would be nearly as good as you. I don't know whether or not you're interested, but I would love to have you do it. So I read it and I thought it was terrific. And I called her and I said, listen, I would love to do it. I think it's wonderful. Let's, let's, uh, let's meet. So she was, she was in New York. So she said, okay, well, let's meet. We'll go down to a, a Soho house, which is kind of like a, it's kind of like the Shishi clubhouse for the, or was, because Shishi clubhouse for the, for the people in the movie business. And there's one here in LA and there's one in New York. She said, I'll meet you there. She was so, you know, she wanted to impress me. She didn't know I was like, I was trying to impress her. <laughs> so uh, we go to Soho house and I'm talking with her there. And I like the script. I tell her that I like the script. And at one point she said, excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom. So she went away to go to the bathroom. And when she went away, a guy walked up to me, a very short guy, very friendly. He said, uh, my name is Danny Strong. Uh, I'm an actor and a writer. I just want to tell you, I think you're great. I'm a huge fan of yours. I said, oh, that's so kind of you to say. I really appreciate it. Can I ask you a favor? He said, what? I said, you're an actor. He said, yes. I said, I'm here with a director trying to get a part. Will you walk away? And when she comes back from the toilet, will you go through the seat? <laughs> That's how shameless, what a shameless dick I am. Well, you worked in the promo world for years, Fred. Right. So you know how to promote yourself, clearly. Right. So Danny Strong, who, by the way, subsequently has become one of the biggest writers in television. He writes a zillion big, famous things. Anyway. He said, sure, I will. So he walked away, Lake came back, and sure enough, five minutes later, he said, excuse me, my name is Danny Strong. I'm a big, he, you know, he played it out perfectly. I said, and I said, can't, don't bother me now. Can't you say I'm talking? You know, I, I, <laughs> I didn't say that. I was said, thank you. I'm, you know, that's very kind of you. Anyway, so I wound up getting the part and doing it. And uh, I had no idea when we did that that the voiceover world, uh, which I knew as this rather uh, small world, this coterie of maybe 150 guys and girls who did the vast majority of the work, I didn't know the ranks that were swelling already, people trying to get into it. 
you know, every three or four years, there would be an article in TV Guide, you know, the millionaires you never see on television who are the voiceovers that you know, but you don't know what they look like. And for a few days, people would be trying to get in and then it would quiet down. But for some reason, uh, somewhere around the turn of the century, uh, it was absolutely flooded with new people trying to get in and do it. Yeah. And there was a kind of a perfect storm where the technology became much less expensive and also ubiquitous, Every, everybody could have it. So people could compete from anywhere in the world because you can, you can do audio in real time uh, from anywhere virtually now. Uh, and um, that happened. And then there was also a strike that happened, a SAG strike, this was before SAG and after World War I, World oh. one thing. A SAG strike happened. And this kind of opened the, the floodgates for uh, a lot of new people to come in. And also for people that had always only used union labor to then switch. And now some huge companies, you know, Ford Motor Company and others, hire non-union voiceover talent, which has entirely changed the collection of things.